Well, the Wakefield Writers Festival is coming this weekend. With us right now, uh, a very important lady. She's a novelist and she's a human rights advocate as well. And she's a doctor. Very cool. Uh, Dr. Monia Mazik is with us. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Wonderful to uh, have you here. So, um, you're an author. How many how many books at this point have we put out? Uh, I have three books, three books. Uh, written, and uh, all of them were uh, translated. Like um, I write originally in French. Oh, do you? Yes. Okay. So they are all translated in English as well. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So your latest book is called Hope Has Two Daughters, mm -hmm. and you're going to be uh, talking about this. You're going to have a conversation with some good people out in Wakefield. We'll talk about that event coming up. Hope has two daughters. Mm -hmm. What is what is this book all about? This book uh, is uh, my recent novel, and uh, it is about Tunisia. I am originally from Tunisia, okay. but um, it revisits two very events. Um, one happened in 1984. That's called the bread riots. Uh, it was like an uprising. People asking for, uh, of course, the. The, the price of the bread went really high, so they were asking for uh, possibilities like to reduce that price. Mm -hmm. uh, but also it kind of, you know, uh, brought to the light or brought uh, the, uh, the oppression, the injustices, uh, the kind of double standards, some people living in good, uh, have co good quality of life and many, many others live in poverty. So mm -hmm. that's, uh, and then the second revolution or uprising is more recent. It's uh, the Arab Spring, it started in Tunisia. And again, uh, people went uh, to the street to really, uh, you know, talk about and not really talk about, shout about yeah. uh, their anger, their frustration, their lack of opportunities. Uh, can, can you tell us a little, little more about the Arab Spring? Oh. What that was all about? So absolutely, it started in Tunisia. It started with a tragic incident. Um, a street seller uh, um, self immolated himself because he was uh, really mistreated by a police uh, woman at that time. And um, that sparked really uh, the whole Arab Spring. People were uh, protesting in many parts of Tunisia, especially in the poor. And and most, uh, uh, you know, uh, oppressed and uh, less disadvantaged part. And then after that, it uh, pushed the dictator, Ben Ali, at that time, who was there for 23 years, mm -hmm. uh, to flee the country. But immediately after, other people in Egypt started really doing the same thing and calling for, uh, you know, the departure of their dictator as well. And uh, in Yemen, in Bahrain, in Libya, and uh, in Syria. Unfortunately for Syria, things are still really very, very tragic today. Mm -hmm. and we know about the refugee crisis, about the war. Of course. Is it difficult for you to revisit these topics and write about them? I think it is important. I wanted to uh, create two really uh, strong characters, uh, the mother and a daughter, the mother going through the bread riots herself and finding her voice, finding her political awakening, understanding her own country. Um, and then uh, her daughter, 25 years later, go there in Tunisia because she didn't really grow up in there. And um, she went there reluctantly, but again she f was facing really those first uh, uh, events surrounding the Arab Spring and she found herself into those turmoil moment and she also had to decide where mm -hmm. she wanted to be either inside of this part of the history or whether really she wanted to continue her life. So for being here in Canada it's obviously very important to bring these stories into our culture to let people in our country know that this has been happening. Mm -hmm. Is it? Yes, it's part I mean for me I re you know I decided to use um, novels, uh, stories uh, as a way uh, to first of all to to keep track of, of, of these uh, uh, important events uh, that maybe I, I know but some other people do not know my kids do not know other you know children growing up here in Canada a part of the world do not know but also it is part of this process of humanization the others today we really need to look at each other more like a human being and not like 
uh, you know, uh, uh, I live in a privileged part of the world, and you are coming here to take my, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, my job, my culture. So I think this is uh, part of my modest kind of attempt to build those bridges through stories, through narration. I think that's wonderful and, and very important. Uh, and now, so this weekend, people are going to have another opportunity to talk to you firsthand. You have an in-conversation event yes. happening in Wakefield. What exactly can people look forward to with your conversation? Well, it's always a surprise, right? Yeah. So, uh, but uh, definitely, um, it will be around uh, uh, the books I write. It's going to be about this sort of discussion about the others, us, them. Uh, it's about also, um, I talk a lot about Muslim women, so mm -hmm. uh, it can be about that, uh, Islamophobia as well. Um. All right. So that's happening this upcoming Saturday, May uh, 13th, between 12 and 2. Yes. In uh, Wakefield yeah. at the Writers Festival. And for more information, we can go to writersfet.com. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you very much for being on the show today. Thank you for having me. It was great to have you, Dr. Monia Mazik, novelist, human rights advocate. And thank you very much for being on the show as always. We have repeats at 6 and 11. Tell your friends. I'm Dylan Black. Have a great day.